Uh, good morning, everyone. And uh, first off, I just want to give a, a, a welcome to everybody. A special thanks to Melissa and the Foundation for making this all happen under special circumstances. And uh, thank you all for your time. So today I want to talk about the Discovery Garden Islandora 8 uh, Institutional Repository Edition, which has uh, just been completed in its first release. Uh, I want to cover the impacts an IR should support. Um, I'm big on solutionizing being like the third step. I like to think about what impacts I want to support, what we can do to bring those back, bring those about, and then how we might bring to the uh, solutionizing from an implementation standpoint. I'm going to talk about DGI's approach and the state of the IR in this first release. We'll review some of the features and then we're going to talk about what's next. And what I don't have here is we're also going to talk about some of the backflow of work to the community. So these are just a, you know, it's kind of remedial for this audience and some of this has already been uh, covered in an earlier presentation, but the essential impacts that I defined when we, when we began this were to um, provide secure storage, preservation, and management of research outputs. And when I say research outputs, I mean a broad array of research outputs. We wanted to accommodate research data sets, uh, traditional research outputs, you know, peer-reviewed publications, um, non-data research outputs such as gray literature, um, theses, etc., publications, um, non-traditional research outputs, which may be media, exhibits, performances, and then also educational assets quite often come under the umbrella of an IR. We want to provide a controlled source identified publication of these outputs and have an interface that supports learning research and collaboration. We know we're going to need to integrate with external services such as for provision of identifiers has been discussed, use of external taxonomies, perhaps have the ability to integrate with current research information systems that exist at some um, institutions. We're going to need to support administrative processes. We need to be able to manage users, provide reporting. Um, and we also, I think, you know, some people might say it's optional, but I don't. But uh, we want to be able to have APOs, academic profiles online. We want to be able to have presentation of the scholar and organizational unit profiles be a part of that, be able to put that into the view. Um, when you look at an IR from a high level, it kind of seems like, well, there's a lot of stuff that dovetails really nicely with a, with a dams type arrangement, but then you drill down a bit and there are a lot of requirements that are specialized. Now for brevity today, because we have a, we have a brief 20 minute window, um, I won't cover all of these ad nauseum, but I'm going to leave them in the presentation so you can get an idea behind the thought process of everything that we were looking at when we decided to come up with this. Now it comes to my attention, I've completely forgotten to make an introduction of myself and my co-presenter. I'm Stephen Perkins, I'm a solution architect and project manager at Discovery Garden. And with me today is Daniel Aiken, who is a senior developer, um, works a lot with the community, I'm sure many of you know him and takes credit for the lion's share of the coding of all of the features. And a quick shout out to all of our other team members that have helped support us through a project that began on April 1 and uh, is just wrapping up now with this first release. Work will continue through the end of the year and we'll take a look at the roadmap ahead. Now, before we began, we came up with some implementation guidelines. Uh, we're gonna provide a custom content type for research outputs that's going to support multi-file outputs, as that is the nature of them, um, and a suite of open standards taxonomies to help structure the repository content. So we've set up controlled vocabularies for many things like rights, access, licenses, typing of relationships, um, scholars, organizational units, uh, many things that we'll take a look at in more detail momentarily. We need to provide a presentation layer that meets the needs of the IR community. Um, research outputs are, are quite different in their presentation requirements than looking at our normal digital assets that we manage in collections within Islandora. We wanted to continue the, the kind of ethos that Seth was talking about earlier of leveraging a lot of community stuff. Drupal gives us a lot. Don't take that to mean that all of it works the way you think it will, but there is a lot out there that we can use. And to the greatest extent, we wanted to be able to develop a cookbook of recipes for meeting our specific requirements and make this really flexible. And it's also to empower the adopters of the solution. Uh, we wanted to avoid building in, you know, we don't want to bake in as much things as we can so that we can provide something that's got good guidance, 
here's how you perform this, you know, set up a configuration for a particular requirement. Um, and that helps us to dodge having expensive and difficult to maintain customizations. And we want to serve a really big audience that way because there are smaller institutions um, that, you know, have needs uh, that need to be met on a budget. And there are larger institutions that have a pretty dizzying array of requirements. Um, and then internally, we have a provisioning solution that allows us to quickly uh, deploy and, uh, and set up sites. And we wanted to be able to manage the IR configurations within that provisioning solution. So with the first edition, what we've completed is we've, we've implemented a backend with another Discovery Garden development, which has been covered in a separate presentation, and I have a white paper available, which is a preservation storage layer. This takes care of all of our versioning, uh, redundant storage and backup of assets and preservation grade storage. Uh, it uses intelligent tiering to decide where it stores things, so that it's a very cost-effective and robust backend solution. We created uh, a research output data model, which has a content type and some media updates that go together. And it links together with a lot of IR taxonomies that we're going to look at. The presentation layer has been complete. Uh, we have added in uh, some IR user roles to the core Islandora roles. We have a submission deposit workflow, antivirus for uploads, spreadsheet ingest that is mapped to the, the research output data model. Um, We've implemented some community modules for to have to have dynamic forms, which allows us to avoid having any coding to do for setting up forms that react by the type of research output that's being ingested and which user role is ingesting it. As also was gone over, there's any number of workflow options that it supports. Uh, we do have access control. We're using a specialized uh, taxonomy with permissions by terms. We've done a, a lot of work uh, with Brian's embargo module. Thank you, Brian. And the, pull, the PRs for that have just been returned to the community. Dan's gonna talk about that later. Uh, we support mediated access using that module. So users who think they have access, should have access or could have access to something can request it. And a lot of other things that tie this all together. We do research data set versioning. There's a set of solar configurations for the content type and many of the other features that Seth covered earlier. So I'm going to move quickly to take a look at the presentation layer. So this is a home page. We have a provisioning set up that has some demo content. Um, on the home page, you have a presentation. You can get counts of your repository content by breakdown or in sum. Obviously, quick options for searching or exploring. And views can be used on the home page to support showing whatever content that you work. You'll see when we look at the, the scholar and organization taxonomies um, that, um, sorry, am I being hailed in chat? Okay, let's see. The, um, the research outputs at a glance show kind of all the things you want to see right away. If this is a research data set, what version is it? What's the publication date? Uh, title, author, abstract, when was this submitted to the repository, what kind of research output is it? Is it a journal article, a data set, and what at a glance is the access status? And of course, all of these are controlled by taxonomies. Now we have a browse by type. Um, you'll see a vocabulary for research output types. So for instance, anything that is text would include a journal article, a book chapter, a thesis, any type of publication that is text. And so all of these are mapped to various types, but allow a quick browsing. Um, and as I said, these are all configurable as with any other Drupal front end. Now, when you do choose to view something, the landing page gives you a display of the summary metadata, a preview if there is something previewable, because remember, we might be just talking about a data set and some configurable blocks for using social media widgets, which you can set up to share with outlets like Mendeley or ResearchGate. Um, you've got your subjects displaying. And metadata for the research output content type is fielded into groups. So there'll be summary, access rights and licensing, people and affiliations related to it, data set details, your identifiers, and of course control over whether these are expanded or contracted by default as a presentation layer setting. Now at the end, you'll see that there is a file manifest. As I said, 
Uh, we've set things up to be able to use a multi-file setup on the research uh, output content type. So you may have multiple media that have a use of research output. So that was one of the modifications. So these are the basics of the, uh, the user interface. Um, search has a silver configuration set up with facets. So you can choose to set up your results, come in by media type, research output type, keywords, which would be an uncontrolled vocabulary, subjects, which is controlled, and some search filter tools that let you do your sorting and uh, choices of results that you want. So those are the basics of the presentation layer, and I'm going to quickly authenticate myself and then tunnel in and give you a, a view on the covers of the data model, because it's about all the time that we'll have to cover. I want to leave Dan a few minutes to talk about what's coming back to the community and maybe handle any of the questions that come up as a result of this. So for the structuring, I'm going to take a, for first take a look at the taxonomies that have been added to the core set from Island Dora. So we've added taxonomies for article processing charge status, um, licenses, and these are really nice because they allow you to store information that can be presented to the user through the presentation layer. So if you wanted your user to have a quick pop-up about, hey, what does this license mean? What can I do with this thing? You could have pop-ups that do that. Um, degree levels, relationship types, so that we can link things from within and without the repository. Access status is based on an open source taxonomy, the PSO ontology, or whether these are open access, restricted access, subscription, etc. Now, of course, all of these people can choose, implementers could choose to use their terms or modify the taxonomies. These are a base set, all of them based on um, open standards. Now, organizational units are included. This lets you build a hierarchy of your institutions, uh, research centers, schools, uh, faculties, etc. Each of them with their own information about their degrees and programs, the units that they have. And these are a web, so they can have relationships uh, to the other ones. The scholar taxonomy is something we're going to expand upon greatly, but you'll see at a glance that we're able to store the ORCID IDs, positions, biographies, link them, affiliate them with organizational units, and link to other resources they have. A future development is going to see these nodes actually a user's taxonomy entry get tied to their node and will be able to prevent views of their outputs on login and allow them to be able to edit the fields on their on their taxonomy node. So all of those are made use of by the research output content type. Which has a very expansive metadata profile that is fielded here into groups. You'll see there's summary metadata, access rights and licensing, people and affiliation, and we make use of linked entities for all of the taxonomies that this connect to. Now, you look at it, you say we've got identifiers, dates, subjects and classifications, um, relationships, uh, which also display on the object landing pages, and those use a DCMI type vocabulary. So you can indicate this data set as a version, another version of a data set that also exists in the repository, or maybe this is a data set that's spoken about, it's referenced in an article that's also in the repository. So people can know all about related resources at a glance on the object landing pages. Now this is a mammoth set of fields. So one of the day, ways that we found was really great for winnowing the herd is to be able to use the conditional fields module and the field permissions module. So what this allows you to do is, let's say I'm back here making an ingest, I can configure rules like that. I'm authenticated, I want to make a deposit. So as soon as somebody selects a research output type, and you'll see the array that we have here that's supported, if I select thesis, conditionally this form can immediately adapt to only the fields that you want a student role to enter for a thesis. So this is a really no-code way to be able to set up dynamic forms based on user roles, and the research output type that you are collecting metadata for. Now, I'm going to run out of time. There's any number of features. 
the indust would just walk through that. Um, I'm going to scroll quickly to where we are on the backlog and say that um, right now, everything that's highlighted here is in active development. We've got some documentation, of course, always lags behind the release. Indexing improvements, we're going to be indexing the, uh, the text and the PDF uh, of the uh, media that are attached to the research outputs. So those come back in the search results. We've got Google, Google Scholar meta tags happening. Um, it was already referenced earlier that we're working on, sorry, um, an identifier framework. Back, please. Go back. Apologies. And we've got uh, work happening on citations uh, and duplicate media detection and all of those are all active and the rest of the features below are roughly in the sequence they're planned now. But of course, early adopters will have a say on which features get prioritized. So from there, I want to turn it over to Dan to talk about the backflow of work that's happened at DGI to the community. Um, there's actually one that occurs to me that I completely forgot to put on this slide while I was looking at the previous slide, uh, which is the citations bit, which is currently being worked on. Um, there's a fantastic, uh, like those familiar with 777 are probably familiar with uh, Island or Scholars um, integration with SiteProc, which there is a fantastic community module out there, uh, BibSite, um, which already does that uh, CSL integration and SiteProc integration. Uh, the only problem is that uh, it only works with their uh, content types, their config entities, or not their config entities, their, their entity types. So uh, we want to take that and expand it so that it works with just general nodes. Um, so that's in the backlog. Uh, yesterday, uh, the sort of modifications that we've been making internally to uh, FSC libraries embargoes module uh, was turned into a pull request. Uh, we had a, a ton of um, feature improvements we wanted to do to that uh, to make it uh, uh, to make it convenient for people to add embargoes and things like that or get embargo reporting uh, up and running. Um, so that pull request is made. Uh, the actual Drupal module that we have set up, including all those configs for things like content types and media types and, and fields and field uh, storage and just that entire list, as well as um, package content for those taxonomies with their terms included, um, is like we need to package that all up into the institutional repository module before it's publicly released. So that's the the next step here so that people can actually take this thing and, and clone it and enable it and install all the content and actually get it up and running um, so that they can actually start putting in research output content uh, like like you've seen here. Um, we've got an up and coming uh, framework that's been kind of used um, to uh, allow you to create actions that uh, in, in the same way that derivative processing in Islandora 8 is handled uh, with actions that essentially call out to services and create media and files. Uh, we would kind of like to do that exact same thing with uh, reading from and writing to fields on nodes. Um, and we can use, like, we can leverage that kind of a framework to attach identifiers or mint identifiers. Um, so that's in the process. Um, I put in here worth mentioning. Uh, one of the features that we've been missing from uh, Islandora Solar in 7 is the ability to have that nice little uh, radio button that says link to a set of search results. Um, and that exists in Drupal 8 uh, with the entity reference facet link module. However, development on that module has been kind of slow for a while. There were a couple of fixes that people have put in that just haven't been adopted yet. 
Um, and then there's another couple of fixes that we want to do that uh, we basically did. Uh, so we have a fork of the entity reference facet link module, which is up right now if you want to grab it and have those nice uh, updates so that you can actually, uh, that's a, like when, um, when Steven was demoing the actual page where you looked at the research output item and you saw on the side, like the keywords that you can click on, those link back to search results and you can do that with the entity reference facet link module. Um, so that's like the it for now, the stuff that we want to push back, but uh, there's there's more on the horizon. But for now, we just want to get these configs and, and content and stuff out. Thanks, Dan. And now I see we've, we've run up our 20 minutes and even just yeah. slightly over, which I apologize for because it is massively difficult. There's a lot to unpack <laughs> and talk about here. So if I talked at 100 miles an hour, uh, I hope it wasn't too bad. Thank you all for your time again. If we can't like answer questions now, please just contact me on the Island or Eight Slack or anywhere. Um, <laughs> I'll happily answer questions if you need me to. Yeah, and I'll hang out for the uh, the full break at noon too. If anybody needs to wants to snag me or hail me for specific questions.